Nikki Cowing is an astrobiologist and former rocket scientist. He currently serves as the editor of nasawatch.com. Keith, thank you very much for your time. Talk, us, uh, talk to us a little bit about what it's taken for China to get to this point. Well, the interesting thing about how this space station is being assembled is the speed at which it's being done. Uh, the first module has barely been up there a year. There's a crew up there now. Uh, this is going up. This will, in essence, double the size of the space station. And then in a few months, another module will come up. And so what the uh, Chinese space program has done in a year or so took the Russians a few years, and it certainly took a lot longer for the International Space Station. So what have they done? Uh, quite a bit in a very short period of time. So as you mentioned, the third and final module is scheduled to launch in October, with officials hoping the space station will be fully operational by the end of the year. What needs to happen in that time to get the station up and running? Well, space stations are space stations. They're complicated, and although it may look smooth when things dock, there are many tests to have to go through in terms of making sure everything is connected correctly, that all the pumps and fans and electrical circuits and these all, t it takes time. And it was I mentioned before of several hundred items on a checklist. As I've said before on your program, uh, space flight is all about checklists. Checklists, checklists, and checklists. And that's what the crew is going to be doing a lot of in the coming months. Now, along with the three sleeping areas, a space has been created for scientific experiments. What kind of experiments will be taking place here, and what are they for? Well, it'll be an expansion of what's been done uh, first on Skylab for Amer from America and the uh, Salyut space stations with Russia, and now on the International Space Station. There's uh, life science, studying how life adapts to microgravity. There's metallurgy, how to do things in, without gravity interfering, uh, how to use furnaces and microprocessing of things, 3D printing, and now we're doing genomics research. So it's the whole span, pretty much anything you can think of, and it's going to be just expanding the world's capability to do this from what has only been capable of being done on the International Space Station up, up until now. Now, the space station's completion is set to coincide with the Chinese leader marking 10 years in power. Can you talk to us a little bit about the overall, the broader political, you know, nation-building uh, uh, achievement that this, that this means for China? What does this mean for China in terms of its standing on the world stage and how it's represented in, in the world? Well, a lot of us would wish politics were a factor, but they are. And they were a factor in the race to the moon that America and the Soviet Union went through. I will say something as an American. In my 60s, I grew up during the Apollo era. And I remember the excitement at this time, at that time when we were oh, my God, go to the moon. This is great. And that faded after a while. But I always ask my friends, well, what is it that China and Japan and India and many other countries are discovering about exploring space that we seem to have forgotten. And it comes down to not just national pride, but it's quite an accomplishment. As, as you may recall, people would say, well, if you can send a man to the moon, well, now I, I think a lot of the rest of the world has realized that space isn't just for one or two countries. It's something that all factors uh, that affect our life on Earth should be involved with, whether it's politics, science, exploration, technology. It's all there, and it's all there for everybody to participate in. Keith, really appreciate your time and insight there. Keith Cowing, editor of NASAWatch.com.